cyber work is all about cybersecurity careers and how they work and how do you get into them. Uh, and I've been looking for someone to talk to us about malware analysts for a while now. And, and you said, you know, I don't actively do it now, but I, I run, you know, I, I manage lots of malware analysts. And I, and as you say, now you like to sort of uh, keep your hands in the game and stuff. So uh, I, I want to just hear all about it to, to get right at the beginning here. What are the roles and responsibilities of a malware analyst in 2021? So I think there are two flavors of malware analysts. Let's start with that. There's the, the guys and gals that work inside the cybersecurity industry, mm -hmm. right? So they work for a vendor. And then there are very large enterprises, VLEs, that have their own SOC that also have malware analysts in-house. And those jobs actually look somewhat different. They share some similarities, but they have some pretty big differences as well. So let's talk about the similarities. At the basic level, what a malware analyst does is they they do a lot of reverse engineering of malware. Mm -hmm. So so some attack will come in, some machine will get compromised, and they're going to look at the implant on that machine, understand what its indicators of compromise were, what did it do, did it open any other back doors, how did what was the infection vector, and then your job diverges. So if you're in the industry, you're mainly focused on how do I detect this thing. How do I stop it? How do I automate detection of this? So one of the big things in industry is that I don't, you know, we're dealing with millions of infected files a day, and in fact, millions of different bits of malware every single day. If I had to have people look at that, I'd have an army of people. And I couldn't afford it, and your malware soft anti-malware software would cost you a thousand bucks a seat, right? Yeah. So how do we do it? We deal we do it with automation. And so my malware analysts, not only there, there's a continuum, right? As they get more and more senior, as they progress in their career, they start off, I'm writing signatures, writing signatures, writing signatures. Okay. As they progress, it's, I'm looking at things that are more interesting. And then it's, I'm looking at detection techniques that fit well with this family of malware that lets me detect this stuff more generically. Now, in an enterprise, you're not so focused, you're not focused on writing detection signatures. What you're focused on is working with the rest of that SOC team, the incident response team to go, what was the impact? So you might get teamed up. You might get teamed up with a network analyst. You might get teamed up with the incident response team. You might get teamed up with the SOC itself to see, to see what's going on. So at the end of the day, you know, the basics are the same. I'm pulling apart malware. And, and that's finicky and it's tiring and it's fun. Um, but what you do with it, the output's different. In, in my industry, it's I'm all about detecting not just this bit, because detecting the piece of malware that's in your hand is easy. Detecting all its brethren, that's hard. Okay. Um, so there's the detection aspect. In the company, it's more the investigational aspect. So it's what are the threats that are going to come against me if I'm Bank of America? What are, what are the threats that are going to come against me if I'm Wells Fargo? You know, what, yes. what impacts me? what was the impact of this in my environment? And so the career paths also look sort of very different too. Yeah, that's, that, I mean, that, that's, that, that leads nicely to my next question about, uh, you know, especially if you're just starting, like what combination of skills, backgrounds, experiences, certifications, or other qualifiers make up a good malware analyst? Like if you're looking for people, uh, you know, to, to fill these early positions, like what, what do you need to see on their resume? That, that's a toughie, right? Because mm -hmm. ideally, I'm going to hire somebody with a computer science degree, Yep. somebody who has low-level assembly experience, um, and, you know, somebody who's shown and demonstrated interest in security. At the low-level, entry level, you don't have to have a, um, a certification of any kind, mm -hmm. necessarily. What's more important is, are you super keen? Are you inquisitive? Are you a good people person for a... Mm -hmm computer scientists, right? So we have the stereotype about computer scientists. Yeah. I, I, I think, <laughs> yeah. So I think, um, you know, I'm looking for low level skills, it, not necessarily in security though. I'll take somebody who's really curious about how things work. I right. think if you understand, if you want to understand how things don't work, you have to start with understanding how they work. So when I used to have PhD students, I very often start them off by reading the RFCs, the sort of fundamental rules of the road for the internet. And they'd say, Richard, this is really boring. Um, but, you know, it's like being the karate kid, right? It's wax on, wax off. Yes. Once you really understand how TCP IP works, now you can use it. Now you can see how to exploit it. Now you can break it. 
So it's the same with um, with malware analysts. So a lot of the students that I taught, I used to teach a class, Windows Systems Programming and an Assembly Language class. And I had a, a local company who, if if the, if my student had taken those two classes and passed them, they were hired as a malware analyst, period. That was sort of the interview. New episodes of the Cyberwork Podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn to stay up to date on all things cyberwork.